All right, guys. So, okay, so let's take a look at the front page here, and uh, basically, this is the image, and I want to show you the settings that I used uh, to set this up. And I could edit this picture any way I want. I could have, you know, taken maybe uh, a little more from the top, a little less from the top, a little less from the bottom. But it's up to the client, uh, however they want it. And then you, as a designer, can decide what you want it to look like, um, and then obviously get their feedback and adjust it. So I'm going to show you what I did in there, and how I did this. So so basically you have your top you have your logo and then your half um, your, your menus excuse me in the middle of the page then you have your image and then you can see here from left to right uh, this is the full uh, width page now if we were to make this a boxed page uh, it probably would be right about here and that would give you everything so let me show you what I'm going to do here on the front page um, and because the client hasn't given me the content yet so remember we broke this into separate parts for them so that they would pay for uh, half the job and then while they're getting someone to write and we, we actually in this job particular job um, we, we're going to add someone to write all the content for us and I'll show you how all that's done um, but we're gonna add someone to write the content uh, for us they're gonna give us the topics now just so you know also on this deal it's very important for you to know as a designer that this took some time for them to get me the logo it took like a week and a half just to get me the logo and some picture ideas and the page names so you can see how the process can be really slow and if you're looking for cash flow in your business or obviously you're doing this generate money so you want to make sure you get paid uh, in in pers in excuse me milestones uh, because sometimes clients can get busy with other projects and they forget about you so uh, so we're gonna edit this a little bit so here's the back-end visual composer um, and what we're going to do is there are different types of layouts for this page now based on what they shared with me and we can change it at any time I think they're going to want you know a couple things on the front like what we call service pages so I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of these layouts uh, and I can always change it so I'm gonna click there and that's going to give me a basic layout waiting for uh, for their content okay now over here we can click on update and so when we click update this will update the site so that when I go back to the front page you'll notice a couple of things so let's go back up and visit the page so this editor by the way and I'll take you through and show you how we add the content but you can see here uh, this is actually very simple uh, to go in and click edit and uh, and make changes to uh, to the images and to the content okay so what we're going to do I'm going to close this out uh, go back here view the main page and you'll notice a couple of things so uh, these are blank images uh, there is again the front page uh, I could put in a slider here if, if you want if I wanted to and then of course I can put in you know here are the images that are missing so here we might put uh, I might load in of the four images that they purchase I might load those in on the front page again still waiting for uh, their content but I might load in the images across the top so they can get an idea of that's the type of layout that they want um, but let's go in and take a look at how this was created so click here on edit page and you'll see uh, and there's different ways to do it uh, we we'll scroll down here so I made sure it was a slideshow now there are different sliders so here uh, there are different types of slideshows so I said I wanted it to be a slideshow at the top meaning that's the header page the page header option is a slideshow uh, <clears throat> then of course uh, I went with the uh, porthole slider and I'll show you how that works then there's the metro slider the 3d slider uh, the revolution slider and the layer slider now these are separate plugins that you could install so if you go back up here to the top it'll tell you to begin the install plugins for uh, for the revolution slider and uh, some of the go price tables if you're going to if this happened to be e-commerce website um, but the layer slider and the revolution slider none of these plugins have been uh, installed and so the theme itself is going to ask you to click here to install those but at the moment I'm not going to use those sliders uh, I can show you what they look like but if you go and look at the theme you'll see there's a big difference between that slider it's a little more sophisticated than what they need so here I'm just going to use a regular slider left to right and I can add multiple images there so I edited this section this is the porthole section I selected the slideshow that I created uh, over here in this section uh, this section right here slideshows if you go there and look at slideshows it's actually named uh, main page slideshow 
Now I could have I could also do one for the contact page or the join us page. I could create different uh, different slideshows for different pages. This one's for the main page. Then the width for it is 2000 and the height is 800. I wanted it to be content width. If you click here on full width, um, that picture that's there uh, would not necessarily uh, go from from left to right per se. Uh, what it would do is this this section here full width is actually going to stretch it uh, a little bit. So I wanted it to just particularly because it has a white background I wanted it to be content width 2000 by 800 and I wanted to fill the view and you can play around with these different settings like you might want to uh, you know click here and change it to fit uh, decide how you want it to play you know all that's completely up to you you'll hide certain captions uh, and things like that to keep it clean you might hide those titles and captions but again that's completely up to you okay so so that's that's really about it now uh, of course I'm waiting for their content so I said what I would do is I'll go in and I'll add some of the images but I want to make them a little bit small so I'll edit those in pick monkey and here's the one that I'm making uh, 500 by 417 and I'm going to just say that this is uh, that looks like a tablet um, and I'm going to say so I know it's, it's the 500 tablet I'm going to go ahead and save that to the purchased images uh, that I purchased and I'm going to save that right there now when I go back to the site uh, here we go go back to the site and uh, so this is you know add an image so what I'll do here load that image in okay this is a single image and you click here and that's going to bring up all the images that you've loaded in so far I'm gonna go to upload and I'm gonna go pull this one off my computer and this one is loaded in and remember I labeled it so that I could find it it's a tablet 500 and then I don't know if this is where they want it or not I'm just trying to you know again build the apartment so to speak uh, so that it looks like uh, there's some things in place and then they can decide okay so this is going to be full uh, we're just going to say full or we could decide on the size uh, if we want since we know it's 500 but I want to try to keep them all the same and then we want it to be centered and at the same time uh, you could decide if the image is going to have round or bordered or shadowed uh, whatever at the moment I'm gonna leave it as default and then if you want to link it somewhere um, you can and in this case uh, I think what I would link this to um, I might link this to since it's not going outside of the website why don't I link it to, and remember it's on a subserver right now, so I'm going to link it to wealth forward slash portfolio dash management. Now, the great thing here is once it's on its own web server, then I could just link it to forward slash portfolio. See, if you look here at the top, I set this up on webbizclicks.com forward slash wealth so we could build it and get an approval uh, for it before we upload it. Okay? And then, so that's going to open up in its own window. So that's the same window. And then, let's see. Okay, we're going to save that. Now, let's go see what it looks like. And if for any reason it doesn't look the way you want it to look, this is uh, what I like to call very forgiving software. You can change it. You can edit it. You can reduce these. Um, you can add some content here and make changes to it. Okay, so now you'll notice something here, a couple things. One, so the image is there and we probably need a little break in here, maybe a little content, something of that nature, but they'll get the idea that this is where their content goes. Okay, and then there's an image and when you click on it, it's going to take you over to the uh, portfolio management page. However, back here on the home page, you'll notice that the uh, slider at the top um, has a slight change in it okay you see this little gray on the right and left so probably what I did when I went in there was uh, I was showing you what you could and couldn't do and wouldn't do and all that cool stuff and then I probably uh, selected something and didn't unselect and then I clicked update and so that's been updated now let's change it back and see what that is okay so we'll go down here um, and it is probably most likely the fill view 
and so let's update the fill view and then let's go back and take a look at and we come back up here and click on view page and so that's what I mean by forgiving sometimes you'll click on something you'll make a little mistake don't sweat it uh, you get to know the software inside and out and uh, there it is okay so that's now the background the color the images here and we're just waiting on content now you notice something else too remember earlier in the branding section when I was working on uh, the branding we click here and in this section I said hey we need a logo in the bottom line a logo in the top line and a floating logo these little marks that are here so let's go back to the web page and um, you'll notice that now when we scroll a little bit the logo disappears but this little image pops up let's go in and pull that up see the little image that pops up here on the left hand side so the branding stays the same while the menu that's a floating menu so it keeps the menu there so no matter how far they go if they're looking at something they might also say what else do you have as opposed to having to scroll back up to the top you know websites and design layout they're all about that user experience that feeling that people get when they come to your website the feeling of professionalism being able to click around you know marketing is uh, you know about putting things in places where people can get to them uh, so milk always goes in the back but then there's all these things that are within reach just like being in the in the store and your kid goes down the candy aisle um, they have specific aisles where there's no candy now because kids are always going I want the candy and it just makes it a bad shopping experience but uh, for the kid it's a good experience because they see all this candy at eye level and they love it um, but parents of course uh, don't want to buy it so it's all about the experience when people get to your website and how comfortable they are um, at doing what it is that they need to do so far so good we have a pretty clean uh, website here so a couple things here for you so here in the fill info section obviously there I, I put a lot of information in there so that doesn't belong in there so let's go in and edit this page um, and they probably I'm imagining they either meant this on the contact page uh, but that's okay because there's something that we need to install so I'm going to um, let's get rid of this okay and then let's go of course we're gonna have to update that and then after we update that let's go in and create a form now the kind of form that I like to use go over here to plugins we're gonna click add new you're gonna to have to get this form from a place called ninja forms now unfortunately at this time ninja forms is not available through the search so you're gonna to have to go to the website and then download it and go to your plugins and get it I've already done it so I've gone there and uploaded it right out of my plugin file I keep separate files within Dropbox that are specific to uh, the things that I'm looking for like uh, in the plugin section I know my ninja forms are there so and if we haven't talked a lot about uh, the benefit of Dropbox I always like to reiterate it Dropbox is really important folks if for any reason your website your computer crashes you can't get to it or you're just trying to share it with your development team your design team you know Dropbox is this thing that's sitting in the cloud where people can put files and you can get to it from your iPad, your phone, your computer. So put everything in Dropbox and keep it secure there. Um, the truth is, Dropbox is when your computer crashes or you can't get to it or it's not working, you can just plug in anywhere in the world. As long as you can get to Dropbox, all your files are there. So your valuable plugins that you've paid for, the way it used to work, is um, plugins would uh, plugins would crash and uh, when they crash uh, you're done I'm sorry when your computer crashes uh, all your files are in there and then you've got to spend money to create a slave drive and try to remove those files and so that that uh, can be very expensive for some people um, and also you're out of business pretty quickly if all of the customers files and all the stuff that you purchased is in there and you can't get to it so anyway you know the benefits of uh, having an offline drive or online drive okay so then what we'll do is we'll go over here to forms uh, and then we'll create a form for that contact page and you'll see that most of the forms are already created so we'll go in here are all the forms and what we'll do is we'll take this form and we'll put it on their contact page uh, I'm gonna do two things I'm gonna remove these from the menu because I don't think I should have created those and then click save and I'm going to go back to the contact section 
and I'm going to clean this up. I made a couple pages without reading some of the details, but uh, we're going to put that. And when we go back and read it, there's the contact form.